All right. Um, Vivek. Vivek. Oh, Vivek, Vivek, Vivek. So Vivek was on all the talk shows, of course, this weekend. He had lots of opportunities to make a fool of himself. Um, and uh, basically, he was asked uh, on one of the talk shows, he was asked what he would have done if he had been Mike Pence on January 6th. And um, <laughs> this is a great opportunity for him to uh, solidify his uh, mega credentials, to solidify his support for Donald Trump. I, you know, to, in the hope, I guess, that Donald Trump is not going to be the nominee and that he fills in his uh, shoes. Uh, this is to quote Vivek. I would have done it very differently. I think there was a stoic opportunity that, was missed, that he missed to reunite this country in that window, really reunite the country. Uh, what I would have said is, quote, this is a moment for a true national consensus, unquote, where there's two elements of what's required for a functioning democracy in America. One is secure election, and the second is peaceful transfer of power. When those things come into conflict, that's an opportunity for heroism. <laughs> yeah, which Mike Pence, I think, exhibited. Here's what I would have said. We need a single day voting on election day. We need paper ballots, and we need government-issued IDs matching the voter file. And if we achieve that, then we achieve victory, and we should not have any further complaints about election integrity. God. Um, I mean, really? This is your answer? He also talked about the fact that the election was stolen by uh, big tech and the Democrats, basically. He went on in that same line of thought. And this is the thing about Vivek. He doesn't believe a word of that. So this is Vivek not that long ago in his book writing about January 6th, St. Vivek. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, throughout the entire book, he mocks January 6th. He criticizes Donald Trump as a sore loser. Um, and he, he talks about the, the United States, including those protesters on January 6th, becoming a nation of victims. He writes, quote, the Republican Party seems to be moving towards the position that all races it wins are legitimate and any it loses was stolen. It's just the preferred conservative brand of victimhood, a knee-jerk kind of soul losing, more common of playgrounds than great republics. This is Vivek. I mean, talk about pathetic. Here's Vivek on Donald Trump, not that long ago. Again, not right now. Would never say this right now, but not that long ago. Quote, but while Donald Trump promised to lead the nation to recommit itself to the pursuit of greatness, what he delivered in the end was just another tale of grievance, a persecution complex that swallowed much of the Republican Party whole. He wrote that. That's Vivek. So, yeah, he's changed his mind. I mean, people are allowed to change their mind, but isn't it convenient the way he's changed his mind? I mean, this is truly pathetic. And then on the, on the uh, Jacksonville shooting, on the Jacksonville shooting, He, he, he says, the reality is we've created such a racialized culture in this country in the last several years that right as the last few burning embers of racism were burning out, we have a culture in this country largely created by media and establishment and universities and politicians that throw kerosene on that racism. I've been saying that for years. I think that is a driving, driving sadly, a new wave of anti-black and anti-spitic racism in this country. Right. So, I mean, that's all in a sense true. I agree with it. But he never actually came out and said and condemned the, 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 uh, you know, the, the racism and the just the hatred 
and the horror of what the guy did in Jacksonville. It's true that this is ultimately the cause. Racism begets racism. There's no question about that. So he mixes just, he mixes stuff that's true and, and often good with just BS. BS. And you know, I, I was reading an article today about what the difference is between liars and bullshit artists. Liars know that there's truth. And, and they're trying to deceive you, but they, they know that there's a truth and there's a lie and they're lying. And they realize that. And that's why they often feel a little bad about it. Maybe they feel guilty about it or maybe they feel like they have to protect themselves, backtrack about it or whatever. Like Bill Clinton was a liar through and through. But what we've got now is a generation of politicians who are bullshit artists. And what that means is, and, and this, is, this is Trump's contribution to the American political debate. Maybe truth exists out there, but they don't care. That is, what bullshit is, 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 is not caring about truth, not caring about reality. And therefore you say whatever. And yeah, it's a lie, but, but it doesn't matter. It, it, it holds no difference than anything else you say. It, it, it's not, it, it doesn't hold this versus reality, because reality, who cares? It doesn't matter. This pure, true pragmatism, where reality doesn't matter, isn't significant. What matters is, will what I say achieve what I wanted to achieve? And, and Trump mastered this, and, and Vivek, I think, is following in his footsteps. What he really thinks doesn't matter. What is true doesn't matter. All that matters is what, what'll get him elected, maybe, what'll appeal to the Make America Great Again crowd, what'll get him the most visibility. I don't know. I don't know what drives Vivek. It's hard to tell what, is, what drives uh, Vivek. Uh, 